Alright everyone, welcome back again to some more Umineko. After all these countless deaths and pointless ones at that, we came to a point where the characters here <laughs> decide to go to the one place that has always been a source for everyone's, uh, I guess, irritation, annoyance, and whatnot, which is Kinzo's room. Because apparently it's the only place that's considered the most protected. Even though Kinzo himself is long gone, probably because he left the room in the first place. So we're gonna continue on from there guys and pretty much see it how it goes from there. Alright guys, and we are back. That crazy theory had just been what I came up with to stop the argument. However, just as Auntie Ava had said, even though that trick would work, I can't begin to explain what motive could have made Grandfather do something so awkward to sneak out of his own study. Plus, that trick of hiding under the bed and waiting for the receipt to be removed before escaping couldn't have been used unless Grandfather had known that the receipt was wedged in the door. Auntie Ava had pointed out that last part, but it's clear how absurd the theory was. Then does that mean that as Auntie Ava claimed that the door was sealed and it was a locked room? Is it, doubtless a, is it a doubtless fact that Aunt Nazi was the culprit and, and that the room was a locked room? If Auntie were here now, she would probably make that claim openly and do me the favor of blowing my strange theory away. But anyway, I had to admit that a room with, a, with both a bed and a toilet that all eight people could be shut up in, and with only two keys both of which are gathered here, had to be the safest place in the mansion right now. At the very least, I figured this would be better than shutting ourselves up in the parlor again and saying nothing went wrong while we were in there before. No, wait. Were we safe only because we were shut up in the parlor? What if leaving that room and moving to the unexplored location is actually more dangerous? Ah, no good, no good, no goddamn good at all. My flimsy head is about to break out in a fever. As I keep flipping over the chessboard, the real and the inverse keep switching with each other over and over and I lose my ability to believe anything. When it seems like the culprit is one of the 18, I want to believe in Beatrice. And once I start believing in Beatrice, I start wanting to find the culprit amid the 18. That keeps spinning around forever and in the end, my thoughts haven't taken one step from where they started. How far back in the past was it that Kirei-san taught me that this chessboard way of thinking? That concept of examining the situation by flipping it over and thinking from the enemy's side. I get the feeling that I was so interested in this way of thinking at the time that I let it guide the way I thought about everything. By the way, Kirei's son was dad's co-worker back then. I hadn't dreamed that the day would come when she would be added to our family. Didn't kirei son tell me something? I get the feeling she once said that while this chessboard thinking was one way to look at things, it wasn't all powerful by any means. And in fact, it was actually bad to rely on it too much. ぜひ複雑な学問なの。in math, when you write 1 plus 1 equals 2, that equation will always be 1 plus 1 equals 2 no matter how many billions of years pass, nothing more, nothing less. That's because that's absolutely no noise mixed in. But for example, unlike math, the Japanese language has noise mixed in. Kanji are a good example. 
Old kanji and new kanji are slightly different, which represents an introduction of noise created by change over the ages. Isn't history the same? There are dozens of policies that seem foolish in the modern era, but were meaningful at some point in the past. Because the rules of chess are fixed, when a pair of experts are discussing one particular position, it's possible that they could reach the same conclusion whether they're from 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future. However, if the rules of chess had gone through massive changes over time, it's possible that the discussion about that same position would have changed as well. その通り、人の世の事象は本来ノイズだらけなのよ。人の感情だってそうでしょ全く同じことが起こったからといって、人は必ず決められた反応を示すとは限らない。それを数学の理論で当てはめ、相手の行動を読もうとする時点で、すで
This exceptionally magnificent door felt like the source of the stench. So this was the door to the forbidden study which had, all, which had turned away all who visited it. While Genji-san was unlocking the door, Maria was staring at the door and the doorknob with great interest. Oh, it's a at this point, I just felt Maria to drop all the pretense and stop acting like she's a little kid. Like, I, like at first I was thinking it was dual personality, but I feel like this is her actual personality and she's just playing with the whole cute, cute little girl voice just to be, you know, uh, what do you call, unsuspecting. And even then, even then, just drop the act. Maria pointed at the doorknob. A scorpion crest. No, a design like a magic circle arranged around a scorpion was inscribed there. This design. That's right. Isn't this just like the those keychain holder charms that Maria gave Jessica and me yesterday? しかもこの魔法人は相当丹念に作られていて力がよく満ちているそれは心強いじゃねえかこの魔法人はとても厄介だろうねうちの魔女様は実に頼もしいぜ ならベアトリーチェはどうやって中のおじい様をバトラが推理した通りだよベアトリーチェは中に入れないでも彼女には魔法があるし使いまだっているそれらを使っておじい様が自分から書斎を出てくるように仕向けることはできるかも ああ漫画で読んだな吸血鬼は十字架が怖くて近づけねえけど使い魔たちはへっちゃらなんで使い魔に襲わせるみたいなシーンを読んだことがあるぜバトラたちに昨日あげたサソリのキーホルダーのよう
the eight entered Kinzo study. Grandfather's study. I heard rumors about it beforehand, so it didn't surprise me all that much. He had done nothing more than fortify thoroughly with, the, with his occult hobbies. If grandfather's hobby had been chasing after pop idols, these walls might have been buried beneath idol posters. Even if I didn't understand it, I did realize that this room was an amalgamation of all things he enjoyed. Even so, I couldn't help but remain dumbfounded by the smell of his creepy medicine and the sweet stench that seemed to melt my head. That's one super lock. When the door closed, it automatically made a clunk. I see, this is the auto lock that's activated whenever the door is closed. And there were only two keys which could open this door from the outside, both of which were in this room. In other words, this room had become a locked room. The shutter, the receipt, the chain. And now the auto lock. This fourth door had been locked in the most magnificent fashion yet, constructing a locked room in a perfect form that none could argue with. Just to make absolutely sure that the room was secure, we checked all over for ways in or out. The windows were tightly locked. That should have been enough, but just in, ca in case, we tried knocking all over the walls. Well, there might be a hidden passageway too. After all, there had been whispers that there might be a hidden door in this room, but we couldn't find anything suspicious. Grandfather's study was very large. Even though we called it a study, it wasn't really a single room. It could be divided up into four basic sections, a study section, a bedroom section, a toilet bathroom section, and a section for cooking that had a sink. I see this study does have enough to live in. Now I can understand how Grandfather could live his whole life in this room without ever leaving. It seemed that Grandfather wasn't in the habit of watching TV, there was no television in this room nor even a radio. Until tomorrow morning, there would be nothing for us to do but pass the time listening to the sound of the rain or reading, or talking. Dr. Nanjo gazed at the chessboard that sat on the table in front of the sofa and muttered. It was apparently that partly finished chess match he had been playing with grandfather until yesterday. The black had the white pretty well cornered and it looked like checkmate would be reached within a few moves, the end of the endgame. Even though checkmate had almost been reached, the endgame had been rushed, and in the end was never completed. Kinzo-san. やはりこの勝負は決着がつきませんでしたな。南城先生。わしは長く金蔵さんの友人だったが、金蔵さんのことを知っているのは半分だけでしかなかった。金蔵さんにはいつも聡明な金蔵さんとは何かの競技に囚
We were a little frightened that she might grimace after reading something shocking, but she just frowned unhappily. Aunt Natsui, after deciding that the contents could be shown to the children, set it openly on the table. Everyone stared at it at the same time. ベアトリーチェの勝ち名乗りみたいなものだろうね。くそ。ほう。大方。また怪しげな魔法人でも出てくるのを期待してたんだろう。魔法人ではなかったけどね。想像は裏切られなかったよ。Someone like bonker again. I hate that smug look on her face, man. It's annoying. <laughs> and that laugh now. どういう意味でしょう。自分の存在を誇示したいのでしょうか。そう考えるのが妥当でしょう。この手紙で初めて私たちは昨夜の手紙の主が犯人であると理解できる。ここに書かれている内容よりも。昨夜と同じ封筒でというところに意味があるものと思います。封筒も封筒も間違いなく親方様が使われていたものです。おお、もう私には何が何だかわかりませんよ。こんなことは後宮のお家にお仕えして以来初めてのことです。昨日の手
、おじいさまと連れ添っていたということになるね。その30年前の愛人、もしくは、その縁者や隠し子が、何かの恨みがあって、何らかの復讐を企んだ。<笑>なるほど。洋館ミステリーっぽい、ありがちなストーリーになってきたじゃねえか。汚らわしい話ですが、一番納得できる筋書きです。どうですか、源氏。おそらく、親方様に恋愛の感情は終わりになられたでしょう。亡くなられた奥様より、愛しておられたに違いありません。デアトリーチェってのは何者なんだよそして今はどうしてるんだお屋敷ができるより前に、お亡くなりになったと聞いています。すでに死んでいるはい。親方様は大層深く悲しまれ、ベアトリーチ様を蘇らせる方法として、黒魔術に系統なさっていったのです。親方様はベアトリーチ様を、心の底から愛しておられたのです。このような狂気に駆り立てるほどに。As Genji Sun said this, he spread his arms as though asking us to look at this room filled with the signs of grandfather's madness. We were all at a loss for words. Before this, his black magic hobby was nothing other than creepy, and we had found it impossible to understand what drove him to devote himself to it. Nobody had tried to understand Kinzo, dismissing him as an eccentric who had restored the Ushiromiya family amidst his madness. All that had been on grandfather's mind was the loss of the woman he loved, and the sorrow of being unable to give up on her. Just a few moments ago, this room had seemed creepy. But in that instant, everything about it started making sense. The creepy books, the magic circles, the medicine, all of it. All just because he wanted to revive once more the visage of a single woman who had left this world 30 long years ago. Once more, I had a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a l i t t それはもう、女の私が聞いて羨むような、深い深い愛情でございました。金蔵さんは、後宮家の当主を継いだとき、当時、まだ生き残っていた後宮家の長老たちの意向で、亡くなった奥さんとの結婚を決められたのです。つまり、後ろ宮家にとって得になる女性との結婚を強制されたさようです金蔵さんはお家復興のためだけに当主に据えられ全ての重責を背負わされたのですそんな金蔵さんがどこでどういう経緯でベアトリーチェと知り合ったのかは分かりかねます<笑>それ以上語るのは無粋だな。That was when grandfather truly fell in love for the first time. How deep that affection must have been. It was easy to tell just by looking around us. This room was covered with piles upon piles of things having to do with black magic. And grandfather had spent day after day shut in here, immersed in his research, and isolated from the outside world, never taking a single day off. You couldn't help but realize how deep grandfather's love for Beatrice was. I. 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 Perhaps they had been acting as though at least Beatrice's soul had been restored and existed inside this mansion in order to soothe grandfather's heart. 
With closed eyes and an expression as though he was remembering something from the distant past, Genji maintained his silence. He probably felt that to confess that would be to betray his one and only master in the most serious way, even though that person was already dead. Beatrice had revived as a witch, and she is in the mansion even now. That was his mantra, what he had believed, what he had made others believe. Alright guys, I'm going to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're going to continue on and see what happens as they are stuck in Kinzo's uh, locked room with all of his various love and effort for Beatrice at that. So if anything else, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the love and support. And I'll see you in the next one.